What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back and it is time to break down week six of the NFL season. This is our first look and uh, we'll go from there. Pretty much welcome to Crab Legs Week. We got Jameis Winston against Atlanta. Been picking on Atlanta all year. Not sure it's going to change this week. Winston is priced up at 5800 which is annoying. I wish Jameis was like 5200 or something like that because... Really, at any moment, he could get benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick. You really know, we all know that's the, the case. If, if Winston comes out and throws three interceptions, he's done. We're, we're putting Fitzpatrick back in. You know that's happening. But we'll talk about some other quarterbacks, then we'll talk about old Jameis. Uh, Matt Ryan, probably the top option on the slate. I uh, believe this Tampa Bay Atlanta game has a 57.5 total as we sit right now. Uh, Kirk Cousins against Arizona, I don't think he'll get enough volume to be worth it. Ben Roethlisberger on the road, I don't play him on the road. Deshaun Watson against Buffalo at 6,400, a little bit too much for my liking, uh, but not a terrible not a terrible spot for Deshaun Watson. Andy Dalton against Pittsburgh, he's an option. I wish him he was a little bit cheaper than 6,300, but he's an option as well. Andrew Luck at 6,200. Uh, I mean, Andrew Luck's fine. Um, but I'm not, I don't love his weapons and I just don't really like playing Andrew Luck. Uh, so at 6,200, I probably won't go there. Cam Newton at 6,100. He has the rushing upside, but he's kind of been a little bit up and down. He, he's pretty closely a lock for 18 points, uh, with high upside, um, at 6,100. Uh, but not sure I'll go there. Jared Goff is interesting against the Broncos, there is no Cooks or Cup right now. They're both in the concussion protocol. So we'll have to see what happens to them uh, throughout the week. Um, Sean McVay is optimistic that they both should play uh, on Sunday. So we'll have to see about that. Rivers, they're running the ball too much. I love me some Phillip Rivers, but they're running the ball too much. Jameis, uh, like I said, it's a 57.5 point total. Atlanta should be up. Tampa Bay's defense is terrible. Jameis should have to throw. What concerns me is the one start we have from Jameis is, I guess, it, was it a start? Fitzmagic actually started that game, right? Yeah, Fitzmagic started the game, was terrible, and they put Jameis in. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what happened, so... I mean, for the limited amount of time that Jameis had in garbage time, it wasn't bad. He went 16 for 20 for 145, a touchdown, and two picks. The two picks are slightly concerning. Um, he did rush once. Uh, I'd like to see him rush a little bit more than that, give you a little bit of a rushing upside. Uh, I hate playing Jameis Winston because I don't think he's actually a very good quarterback in real life, but this matchup is really good. Russ at 57, uh, he's just not doing enough uh, for... for in terms of fantasy this year. He's been a fine real-life quarterback this year. He just isn't doing much fantasy-wise. Bortles, no, that game's going to be slow. Baker, Baker Mayfield is the other option I like down here with Jameis. Um, gets a matchup with the Chargers. He should be down in this game. Should have to throw. Case Keenum, also a decent option against the Rams. Should be down in that game. Should have to throw. Other than that, I'm not playing any. I'm not playing Joe Flacco. I, I, I'd consider Derek Carr against Seattle I mean as much as people want to rag on Derek Carr this year he hasn't been terrible and at 5k he really wouldn't be terrible especially if he had to throw so if this game kind of turns into a shootout against Seattle and Oakland you could see Derek Carr throw and truly and honestly I mean you wouldn't be happy with three of these weeks but you wouldn't be mad about them like if I got 15 points from Derek Carr one week I would not for 5-1 I would not be mad about that um, I'm not playing Rosen, Allen, or Prescott down here, so we can move on. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and throw in old famous Jameis and his crab legs into the quarterback spot. Um, Todd Gurley is 10K. He's super touchdown dependent. If you look at his scores this year, he is super touchdown dependent. I mean, he scores 15 points last week without a touchdown. If you have realistic expectations of one touchdown, he still only scores 21. Um. And while he's touchdown dependent, Todd Gurley's touchdown equity on this team is probably second highest to Melvin Gordon in the entire NFL. Um, I say second because I think the Chargers force it a little bit more to uh, Melvin Gordon in the red zone than, they, than the Rams do to Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley gets a lot of his touchdowns just in the flow of the red zone. 
Uh, so I don't really think they jam it to him to, to force touchdowns, but uh, he does have more touchdowns than Melvin Gordon. But I hope you guys get my point with that, that his touch, him and Melvin Gordon have the highest touchdown equity in the NFL. Um, but Todd Gurley is still touch or touchdown dependent. If he doesn't get the touchdowns, he's not going... If he ever has a week where he gets zero touchdowns, I mean, it's going to be a bad week for Todd Gurley. He's not getting a 100-yard bonus rushing. He, he got it two weeks, two out of three, and for 10K, I want it every week. He's not really exploiting the passing game. I mean, he's getting yardage, like 50 yards is good, um, and the catches are good, but he's not, you know, getting 70 yards a game to compensate for not hitting the 100-yard bonus. So I'm just saying, temper your expectations with Todd Gurley. Um, if he doesn't get in the end zone, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, like I said, I think he gets into the end zone more often than not because he has one of the, he has the highest tied with Melvin Gordon for the highest touchdown equity in the NFL. Um, and so we'll move on to a guy who has maybe the lowest touchdown equity in the NFL at running back for a stud. And that's Christian McCaffrey. I love McCaffrey, but his touchdown equity is just terrible. They love to have Cam run it in. They have C.J. Anderson to run, power run. They have Funchess and Ian Thomas that they look for in the red zone. So I just I don't like Christian McCaffrey's touch and equity. Washington does give way to the running back, so uh, you can look that way. But uh, Christian, don't don't ever play Christian McCaffrey expecting a touchdown unless it's Atlanta. Then you can maybe expect a touchdown. Melvin Gordon is 8,200. Uh, like I said, second best touchdown equity in the NFL behind Todd Gurley or ahead of Todd Gurley, however you want to look at it. I think I view it. A, I view his touchdown equity a little bit higher, even though he only has six touchdowns. Um, the week one against Kansas City was was weird. Austin Eckler got the touchdowns. Uh, San Francisco was kind of weird as well. He And they're not scoring as much as the Rams, so his touchdown equity is going to be lower because he, they score less than the Rams do. And he also is competing with Austin Eckler for touches. I think technically Gordon's equity is higher, but because of the snaps Gurley plays per snap, I think Gordon's equity is higher, but per game, I think Gurley's is higher. I think that's probably the best way to state it. James Conner, I'm not going to play him against Cincinnati um, just because I don't want one of these games. Um, he has two explosion games this year, one okay game and two terrible games. So go with that as you will. Joe Mixon is going to be my first player early in the week. He had 22 touches last week, um, in a game they were supposed to be easing him back into. And so I like me some Joe Mixon. TJ Yeldon is going to be my next play. I, Fournette's doubtful and I believe Corey Grant is doubtful as well, wherever he is. Where's Corey Grant? Oh, Corey Grant got put on. Okay, so they put him on IR. I, I thought they would. I thought he would just be out, but he's actually placed on IR, so he is out. So, and I didn't mention this with Mixon. Gio Bernard still remains out, so Mixon should get all the touches split minimally with Mark Walton. Uh, TJ Yeldon at 6,400 is plopped in there next. Without Fournette and without Corey Grant, there should be no one to compete with him for touches. As always, we like to have that uh, running back in the flex. So let's go ahead and put Yeldon in the flex. Um, but TJ Yeldon should see all the touches at running back um, without Corey Grant or um, Leonard Fournette. He has the receiving upside. He has the rushing upside. There should be no Sean Lee this week for Dallas. So he should be in a prime spot uh, to do work. Now, we got some other running backs to talk about. Zeke is underpriced at 7K. I don't think I'll play him against the tough matchup against Jacksonville. Jordan Howard, it looks like Jordan Howard might gain a lot of traction and possibly be chalked this week uh, against Miami. I don't love it. Probably would just play TJ Yeldon before him and Joe Mixon, and I'll talk about it a couple other running backs. Um, Chris Thompson, interesting pass catching back if they get down, but they have to get down for him to be useful. Adrian Peterson did look like he fractured his labrum or tore his labrum in his shoulder um so we'll have to keep an eye on that if if, if adrian peterson is definitely definitively out then chris thompson becomes a little bit more viable freeman it looks like it's a three-headed monster in atlanta um with Edo smith so probably not going to be playing any atlanta running backs uh dalvin cook is the other question mark if he's out we get lap murray against a terrible arizona defense so we'll talk about him 
David Johnson, 5,900. I believe two years ago, most everybody in the DFS community faded David Johnson against Minnesota, and he went off. Um, I don't expect that to happen. This Arizona coaching staff does not get him the ball. Carlos Hyde is interesting. Um, he's been seeing 20 touches per game. Uh, he had 19 last week, but roughly 20 touches per game. Um, and at 4,900, that's really nice for 4,900 running back to get that many touches. Uh, wherever, where the heck is Lamar Miller? Lamar Miller is still questionable. We'll have to see how this projects. He will return for the game. Um, he didn't play. I, I didn't watch, I didn't participate in the Sunday night slate. Um, but it looks like, it looks like. Miller is going to play, so we'll just assume Miller plays for now. If we get new news, we'll, we'll take him out. But I was going to talk about Alfred Blue, who's 4,400, but if Lamar Miller is going to play, can't really play Alfred Blue. Um, so the cheap option now is if Dalvin Cook's out, you go to old Lat Murray. The 32nd ranked rush defense in the NFL is the Arizona Cardinals. They're terrible on offense. The Vikings should get a huge lead. Should see more than 11 rushes. I know Boone and, um, you know, what the heck are all their stupid running backs? Um, Boone, Ham, and Rock Thomas. I think they all touched the ball. So Rock Thomas had four rushes. Boone had one rush. And Ham had, Ham had zero rushes, but he caught a ball. So, I mean, it, it, it is a multi-headed monster there, but uh, Lat Murray should see most of the touches. And at 4,700, he probably has the highest touchdown equity um, on the team if they get inside the five. So, Lat Murray at 4,700, really good play in my opinion. Moving on to wide receiver, we've got Antonio Brown at the top, 8,700 against Cincinnati. Always in play, always an option. I'm going to say that about pretty much everyone, including Mike Evans, A.J. Green, Adam Thielen. I, I just don't want to pay them. I'm going to play, I'm going to ride the, the circus again, and I'm going to play Julio Jones at 7,900. Unless some crazy value opens up at wide receiver and I can't fit Julio, I'm playing Julio at $7,900. And there's not much to talk about here at wide receiver. It's pretty easy this week. I'll go over it real quick, but it's Julio Jones, top option, 7,900, and it's a terrible Buccaneers defense who can't cover anybody. You want to pick on Tampa Bay a lot more with number two wide receivers, but Mohamed Sanu is not cheap anymore. He's like 50, or he's 4,800. He's not cheap anymore, so not really sure I want to play Mohamed Sanu. Um, if Will Fuller continues to be banged up, um, he he was banged up with that hamstring. He did play, but he didn't play well because the hamstring limits what he does. You can play Kiki Kuti, who is 44, 4,600. So Kiki Kuti has had 7 and 15 targets, um, and at 4,600, I'll take the 7, and you can get rid of the touchdown, and I would still take it at 4,600. Um, it would have been 11.3, still a good game for a guy at 4,600, but we're not going to assume Will Fuller's still going to be banged up. We'll recircle that later if he happens to be. The real thing is, is it looks like Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup are going to play. Um, if they don't play, it's all the Josh Reynolds and all the Robert Woods if both of them sit. If one of them sits, probably just Reynolds, um, because Reynolds is 3,600. Uh, but but uh, McVay seems pretty confident that they're going to play, so we won't plug them in yet. Uh, moving on down here, I love me some D-Jax. I always love Deshaun Jackson, but I don't think I don't think this this I don't think this is the game to play Deshaun Jackson in cash. I think I'll throw some GPP darts. I'll probably have a full Tampa Bay Atlantic game stack for GPPs, um, but. Uh, DJX, I do love DJX, just maybe not in cash. Moving on down, I love Doug Baldwin. I know he disappointed a lot of people last week, but he still saw a lion's share of, I believe he was on the field for 84% of the snaps. And so I still think uh, Doug Baldwin is a playable. Um, Russell Wilson's favorite target, and it's not even close. And so I think, I think he's still viable. I'm not going to let one week scare me off of him. Mohamed Sanu, like I said, at 4,800, definitely viable. He's still seeing 
a fair share of targets, 7-9-7. Seven, seven. Um, and so I have no problem playing Muhammad Sanu in what should be a shootout. So we'll go ahead and plot Muhammad Sanu in there. I know I said I thought he was like 5,800, not 4,800. So Muhammad Sanu in there, we'll run it back. I mean, essentially, my cash game lineup's going to be a lot of Atlanta, Tampa Bay. You'll see. Uh, Chris Godwin is interesting. Uh, he's down here at 4,400. So if you go to tight end, um, we have, where, where is he? O.J. Howard. Um, I believe he, he was out last week, uh, but the recovery time is two to four weeks. So it's expected that he should be out again this week. And so... That means good old Cameron Bright here at 3,700. Should be the only tight end available. Four targets, four targets, but 3,700. I'm willing to take the risk on a Cameron Bright at tight end. We'll go talk about more tight ends here. Hold on. So tight ends, more tight ends. Got David and Joku. Saw 11 targets last week. Seven, seven I, I'm, I don't know. This game's an outlier to me. It's seven, 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 and 11. I mean, pretty consistent from him. Two different quarterbacks, consistent. Nick Vanette at 2,900. I love Nick Vanette. I uh, looked to Russ looked at him a lot last week. Didn't always throw him the ball. Only four targets, but he did look his way, and Vanette looked pretty good. And so at only 2,900, I think he's a very viable option. CJ Ozoma, I think, is an option with Eifert on the IR. He's an option as well. Other than that, I don't really want to spend up for Ebron or anyone up top like there. And so then we move on to defense. We'll talk quickly about defense. I think I think it's the Titans again. They're 2,500. They're a good defense, in my opinion. I think I think it's the Titans. I mean, there's not much else down here in terms of in terms of the bottom of the barrel to play. 2,500 is a fair price, and I don't see a lot else that I love. The Ravens' defense at 2,800 is is fair, but I don't love it. So we're gonna put in the Titans. It gives us 6,700 for a wide receiver, and there's someone at 6,600. 6,600 that I think we just got to play. Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, 10 targets, 10 targets, 14 targets, 7 targets, 15 targets. He's a guy that you can lean on for double-digit targets. Now, if he's only going to catch 4 or 5 of the passes, he's not going to get it done for you. But it's a better mark matchup against the Chargers, who are not nearly as good without Joey Bosa. And so I do love me some Jarvis Landry at 6,600. This is the team... Um, interesting first week or early week lineup look. Um, I'm sure things are going to mix around. Guys that are kind of staples in my lineup right now are Julio and then Cameron Brait. I think those are the two really locked in guys. Probably TJ Yelton as well with Corey Grant on the IR and Leonard Fournette doubtful. Uh, so that's going to do it, guys. That's the initial lineup look. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys in the next uh, breakdown video. That'll be the Thursday night game. That'll be coming out tomorrow. So I'll catch you all then. Peace out.